This is Karen with NewClevelandRadio.net, and it's time for Avoid the Maze, conversation with Eric Teplitz. And um, as I was just telling Eric before we went live, um, you know, so many of us think, oh, wow, you know, holidays, New Year, uh, everything's going to change, you know. And uh, I I personally, Eric, do not make resolutions. Um and when I make a commitment about something, whether it's to lose weight, to um, do more or less podcasts, if it's something that I really want to stick to, yeah, I'll put it out there for the world to know so that I can be held accountable. But I've never understood this idea that December 31st, it's okay to do one thing, but uh oh, it's now January <laughs> 1st and I got to change everything. So, where do you stand with that New Year change? Well, first of all, when you said that, I thought it's okay to do one thing Monday through Saturday night, but then Sunday morning, suddenly you behave differently in some cold, in some um... cultures. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, it's a great. Point and a great, I think, subject or a great thing to discuss. Where do I stand with it? Well, first of all, let's just acknowledge that I think most of us understand that December 31st, January 1st, these are these are uh, human constructs, right? In other words, like we, we came up with a calendar and it's based on the, it's based on the revolution of the earth around the sun and you know when you wake up and it's a new day it's a new day whatever we decide to call that day or name that day or however however we decide to refer to that day now that said i think that there's a powerful psychological effect of beginning a new calendar year as we collectively, you know, um, uh, ascribe this significance to it, right? Like it's a, it's a completely new calendar year. And it's a new calendar year every day we wake up. I mean, in a way, right. And, but I, I've noticed that, um, that for me, like I noticed over the years growing up that the two dates that were, that had a lot of psychological significance to me, and I imagine I'm not alone with this, um, were um, New Year's Day or New Year's Eve into New Year's Day and my birthday. And it's it's the same kind of thing, right? Because it's it just is a – if you haven't already had an excuse to reflect on where you are in your life and how things are going and maybe what the gap is between like your, your ideal and your reality, um, you know, those are times where it just – I always felt growing up that there was a lot of pressure – um, about that that coincided with one's birthday, and I, and I bet it's different in other cultures. By the way, I'm just speaking, of course, for sure. Yeah, you know. but um, but uh, the, there was just this. I always felt like there was this pressure, like on both my birthday and New Year's Eve, like the pressure was on to make sure you had a good time. <laughs> in a way that didn't exist on other calendar days of the right. year. Um, but you know, I think that I think reflection is always a good thing. I don't think it should be reserved for um, you know, the night before your birthday or the night before the a new calendar year. Uh, I think reflection is a great practice, uh, daily practice in whatever way works for for people. You know, I mean, I'm I'm big on journaling, but um, taking taking time to to reflect on a given day, and also to you know, I I do believe in making plans like setting goals and making plans for sure. And, you know, you don't have to wait until December 31 to, to quit a bad habit or to, you know, January 1 to start a good new habit or to change your routine or, or shake things up. There is psychological significance to it. And I, and that's fine. If, if that, if you, if that helps motivate you and if that, then that there's nothing wrong with that, but we don't, we don't have to wait Exactly. And also, and also there's, I think, you know, it, it all co always comes back for me to expectations and, um, 
And part of the reason I, I said, you know, this pressure that I used to feel, I guess I still do to some extent, um, but this idea of there are expectations and like, for instance, a, a new year, it's sort of expected that we're all going to be better somehow or that we're all going to like really commit to making big changes. And I think a very common experience, right? Well, today's we're recording this on January 17th. Certainly, like if it hasn't happened already by the end of the of the month, a lot of people are kind of like bummed out and disillusioned and have given up on a particular goal or commitment, right. you know, and it's the, and it's notorious like for the, the the way you can almost measure this is like gym signups and gym memberships, like, you know, and and then the people that are actually still showing up at the gym in February. Um, so this is human nature. I mean, and uh, I think it's important to. If you, I mean, look, if this, if you set a goal and you, and like starting January one, you're going to be in a, a certain way or uh, adopt a certain practice or habit, or you're going to work towards a certain goal. And if you're well on your way and everything's, you know, pretty much going as planned, fantastic. I'm not saying that can't happen. I've done it, you know, um, but if that's not the case. And it's just as likely not the case as it is the case, maybe more likely, I don't know. Um, I think the first thing that's really important is to is to have s compassion for yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and you know, and and look, it's it's not like, oh, now it's all ruined and I have to wait till January one of 2024. And like, come on, like <laughs> that's ridiculous. Um, so I just think that um, all of us really, you know, generally speaking, we're doing the best we can each day. And I'm not saying that I'm not saying that should be an excuse, right? Like you, you want to have standards for yourself or you want to like make improvements or tweaks or, you know, set new goals and do new things and improve all of that's great, but it shouldn't be at the expense of like, you shouldn't shouldn't i i i got to watch my myself even with, <laughs> with with those words but like it's not helpful to condemn yourself to berate yourself to you know like it just isn't helpful i mean maybe in some instances it can be as a motivating tool and i know in the past i relied on that as my only motivating tool it's not you know ultimately though it's not a good long term strategy and um you know if you slip if you if you if you have a commitment and you haven't gotten yourself you know to see it through or you're not as organized and as together and as on track as you hoped every day is a fresh start i mean every really every moment is a fresh start there only there only is now that's the funny thing like with calendars and time like this is a human construct of of like measuring time and into into pieces and hours and minutes and days and you know like th these are um there's only ever now, and I'm not saying that that you didn't have a past, and, and but you you your only agency is in the present moment, right? And that's always the case. So there, you know, now is always here, and as soon as you've declared it, so it's it's already gone, right? It's past. Exactly. So, but but in other words, it's it's never too late to resolve, and and ultimately, I think that if you know. Um, having just like a, a calendar as the only support system or foundation for a goal, it's 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 probably not likely that it's going to support it to right. be enough to support it a strong enough foundation. You know, it needs to come from a really um, deep place within you. Um, and and it and there has to be a you know I mean cliche as it is and overused as it as it is there has to be a compelling why you want to do something not because it looks good not because you want to impress people or, or like that's just not going to be enough exactly it needs to be something that is important enough to you that you're willing to make make it a priority and make sacrifices for it and just you know and commit and commit to it and so we're not always ready. We sometimes we want to be ready to make a particular commitment, but not we're not completely on board. And it's not to say you shouldn't start or, and try, but I'm just saying that every moment is a new chance to start over to begin again. Absolutely. And you know, 
you know, I love this conversation because uh, right after Thanksgiving, I realized that um, I was burning the candle on both ends. Um, my husband was going through treatment. My son was flip-flopping about which job he was going to accept, where he was going to move. Um, and I let all these play through me. So in my head, I was making excuses. You know, I'm tired because of of Alex's issues. I'm tired because of Richard's issues. Um, but right around December 1st, I looked at the calendar and I said, I just can't do what I had planned. Hmm. And I openly went out and uh, contacted everybody on my calendar. And some I moved off into the new year. Others I even said, at the last minute, I may cancel. And this is mm. why I'm feeling burned out. And I have to figure out what that burnout is about. Is it about what I want to do? Is it because I'm helping other people? Um, or is it something else? And as it turned out, um, I found out just this past week, I've had a chemical imbalance. Hmm. To the point that uh, I was asked yesterday by the doctor, you look so good today and you, you're you acting like, you know, you've got the world off of your shoulders. And I said, yes, because what I've been complaining about for so long, nobody's taken seriously. Hmm. Finally, a doctor over a week ago when I had the flu said, why are you taking this medication? And I said, I don't know, which is bad. You should know what, why you're taking certain medications. I said, I don't know. He said, well, we're going to call your doctor right now hmm. who prescribed it. And who said this? A, one doctor about another. Yeah. Okay. So it was and, someone I mean, was other like, than your, yeah. so, someone other than, was it your, one of these was your primary care doctor? One, or? Who was my primary care who decided to make the phone call. I see. And Got it. I looked at him and I said, Oh, please don't get him mad at us, which was like, where did that come from? He mm -hmm. said, Karen, you're doing better. I took you off that medication last week because it seemed like that was the problem. He said, but I want to know why you're on it. You know, the other doctor had no idea why he put me on it. I'd been on wow. it for five years and over the last five years, I've kept saying, I don't have the energy I need, you know, or then mm. I would make a plan. Okay. To get the energy back, I'm told I should exercise more. And then not did I only exercise more. I exercised way beyond because I kept hoping to get this rush of adrenaline mm. and feel better. Mm. And when I was told this yesterday, I just sort of like, looked at the doctor and I said, you know, 2023 is going to be a good year. And he goes, well, I hope so. And I said, no, because I'm taking charge. Hmm. I don't know if it's going to be a good year that, you know, everybody is going to sit, you know, get sit in a circle and sing Kumbaya, but I'm taking charge. You know, finally somebody listened to me. So, you know what, hmm. I'll keep pounding on the door so I then came home and I looked at my schedule again, going forward. And I thought, wow, in December, I basically took everybody off my schedule. That's not what I want because I like the connection. And so I started filling it up. But as I was filling it up, I was being mindful about, hmm, you know, do I need to do three podcasts in a day don't have to hey let's give myself some other time and i think those are the changes we have to make as individuals it's not necessarily that we have to make this big huge change hey i'm going to lose 100 pounds in a year okay you may want to or need to lose the weight but i think we have to look at it in small increments what can i do now mm -hmm. Mm. And what's going to feel comfortable tomorrow? Yeah, it's a great point. Um, 
I think of them as calibrations, right? And and you don't wait till once a year to make them, you know? Right. Um, and, I, you know, I'm a big believer in whatever works, and I don't think there's always a one-size-fits-all recipe for, for everyone to follow. So I, I think it's really – that's why I believe in this regular checking in, this regular reflection, because – your needs and and the way you know your, your rhythms and your changes are not going to conform necessarily to any anyone else's calendar or the calendar at large um so you know it's a way to sort of honor yourself and to check in with yourself and to say do i need to make a um your, your goal might remain the same but do i need to make a course correction or do i need to make a tweak uh, do i need to do some a little bit less of X and maybe a little bit more of Y or what, 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 you know, what is being called for now at this, at this moment. Um, and we like to plan a lot of us. I know I do. And um, it's this combination. You know, I, I just, more and more, I just see the, um, the truths in opposites presenting themselves everywhere. You know, A is true. And then the opposite of A is also true. <laughs> um, so plan by all means, set goals, make plans. And you also have to have a certain amount of ability to pivot and be flexible, you know, but I like what you said about taking charge because all we can do is, um, is take charge of ourselves and our own, you know, decisions and our own way that we operate in the world. And the story you told about, you know, this doctor questioning this prescription you were on for five years, and then the person, the other doctor who had prescribed it, didn't even know why it had been prescribed. I mean, this just this just goes to show you that ultimately we are responsible for all of our behaviors and decisions, and by all means, we should seek expert guidance, especially when it comes to our health. Absolutely. But 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 we are each our own ultimate authority. We can listen to the opinions of others that and and others that we respect or others who, you know, um, we feel are qualified to advise us. But ultimately, the buck stops with us. We're the one that has to make the call. We're the one that has to agree to take a particular prescription, or and then and then we're responsible. I mean, even if we don't under, so we're also responsible for understanding why we're taking something and for how long and all of that kind of thing. But it's again, and this this is not meant to make people feel guilty or bad about themselves. We're all, we're all human and we all have our blind spots, Absolutely. you know? So um, all any of us can do is when uh, equipped with more information act to act accordingly, we can only act on the best information we have at a given moment in time. No one can know everything. <laughs> no one. <laughs> so, you know, isn't but it yeah, what is... I'm, I'm happy for you. I'm happy for you yeah. because anytime Anytime we figure something out that actually works in our, like that actually helps us, whether that means taking a medication, whether it me that means stopping a medication, you know, whenever we get to the bottom of something, if we're having an issue in, with energy or anything, like, you know, it's, it's, in, it's just a wonderful gift whenever we either discover or stumble upon or are gifted by the universe, some kind of answer or a uh, preliminary answer that, that moves the needle. And then you go, Oh, I'm not crazy. Like, this is like, there was a reason for this, that I was not feeling, uh, you know, up to, up to par. So. Well, and, and that's what I hope our listeners understand because I'm, I'm hearing so many people recently just telling me that they feel like they're just marking time. Hmm. Yet I look at some of them and I think, wow, look at the great things that mm. they're doing. Um, and I've learned not to say that to them because if they don't feel it, I can give them all the accolades in the world because it's been done to me too. And I just go like, you don't know what you're mm. talking about. And so I've gotten really good at learning how to listen when people are talking about, you know, that they're just marching through time and it's, well, do you want to do it any differently? Maybe that's yeah. the way you want to go. Um, some people like a routine as boring as it may be. That's what they want to do because 
that makes them feel alive in some sense. I'm one of these people that, like you, I like to plan, but I've had to learn not to over plan <laughs> because that's, that's been my whole life's goal. It's like, oh, let's fill that calendar full of things to do and I'm going to look important. And who are you looking important to? Maybe you're well, and a pl- you know, I think a plan, really the purpose of a plan is just to set you in motion, get you, get you in motion. Um, it doesn't mean that the plan is going to go as planned. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> but at least it gives you a direction, right? And so you're in motion. And then when you, when, and if you need to pivot or change the plan, you can, but plans are helpful because they, they do give you, you know, they, they give you a, a sense of purpose and a, and a goal to strive toward. And again, I just think it really amounts to, it's almost like, uh, it's almost just like a device that is, that is helpful in the moment to put you on a path and get you in motion. And beyond that, we'll see what happens, you know? Absolutely. So I know you do coaching and, um, you know, people come to you because they want to climb a mountain or uh, something oftentimes aggressive. Can you tell when one of your potential clients is not really being truthful about what it is that they want to do? Because I used to do that a lot. And I know that. I, I don't think any of us is immune to that. And what's helpful about having a coach is really just having uh, more objectivity than you can provide to yourself. And it's an, it's a, it's an important question. You know, if someone, you know, claims they want to do something, something's important to them, but their actions are not, um, reflecting that, then it, it's worth investigating. It's, it, it is, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that, that they, they, they don't care about the goal or that, but it's definitely worth investigating because it's it's quite possible that they don't really want to do it. We tend to do the things we want to do if we really if we if we really do want to do them. Right. Now we want to do everything, but I, you, you know what I mean. Like if something is really important to us, generally we're going to find a way to do it. Um, and if something is not important to us. It can be like trying to physically move a house with your hands. <laughs> you know, if it's really not important, even though you feel like maybe it should be important or, you know, you want it to be, you wish it were important to you, but it's not, you know, if you're not taking action in that direction, it's possible that maybe it's not. And so, you know, part of coaching is, to, is, involves helping people really discern for themselves, getting that clarity about what, what is it that they really do want? You might be telling, you know, you might've been telling yourself for a long time that you want something in particular, and maybe you do, but it's always, again, this is why that, that self-reflection practice is so important to check in. Like, is this still, is this still the right path for me? Does this still feel right? Is this still, you know, does this, is this what I still want? Is this still important to me? Because it's so interesting when, when something's really important to you and you really, really want to do it, obstacles are always going to, you know, show up, but Absolutely. they're not going to stop you if you really want something. They're probably not going to stop you. And if you don't really want something, the slightest obstacle might stop you. So just something to keep in mind. Well, and I think it's important that we reflect on that as well, because again, when I go back a little over a month ago, um, knowing that I had to trim things down because it was something I needed to do, there was part of me that was saying, um, you may look like a failure. And I had to ask myself, who am I going to look like a failure to never done that before, mm. but all of a sudden it was like, is my husband really going to be upset that I'm only going to do two thirds of the workload or a half of the workload? He probably doesn't even know what the workload is. <laughs> right. And then I thought about my clients the same way. Are they going to think, 
oh, Karen's letting the business, you know, fall apart. Well, if I'm still interacting with the people that are important in the business, they're not going to see it. And I had to keep reminding myself of that. Like, well, also you can't control what other people think anyway, right? Like, well, exactly. So, so to your point about, you know, earlier where if someone is convinced they're a failure, nothing you say is necessarily going to change their mind about it. And also the reverse is true. Like if you judge someone else as a failure, that's your judgment and it doesn't ha necessarily have any ref like, you know, validity to the person you're judging. I mean, just look at like, you know, critics of all kinds, right? They'll, they'll condemn other people's work. Um, and maybe say, you know, because it doesn't please them, but maybe the creator of the work is quite proud and of it and pleased with it. Is it a failure? You know, there's a, I don't know if you know, there's a guy named Tom Bilyeu. He, um, he's a very interesting guy and he does uh, a podcast among other things. And he has this, this phrase that he uses that I, I think is, is pretty good. And it, I think it's relevant here. He basically says, it all boils down to how you feel about yourself when you're by yourself. So let's like, you know, tune out all the noise and, and the opinions of, of others and everything. Like ultimately what, what, what he's saying is, you know, we want to behave in it. We want to make ourselves proud of, of the way that we show up in the world and we want to we want to feel that we're doing right by ourselves and are living our according to our you know core values and doing the best we can we're human we have our limitations we're no you know we, we can't do everything we can't please everyone we can't even do everything we want to do that we that we genuinely maybe do want to do but what we have control over is how we show up and the efforts that we make and ultimately what what really matters the most, I think he's right about this, is like how you feel about yourself when you're by yourself, not how you pretend to feel, not how it, it looks to other people, not how not what other people feel or think about you, but are you doing right? And of course, I'm not suggesting that we be completely selfish creatures. Part of part of um, how you feel about yourself is the way that you treat other people and the way that you show up for other people. But it's a calibration. We don't want to do this at the expense of ourselves, right? So um, this this whole life, this whole game that we're in, is it's not easy for anybody. I am I'm completely convinced of that, really, no matter who you are. Um, and so that that's why his, his phrase, I think, really has a lot of potency to it. Because regardless of who you are, regardless of your how you appear to the world or don't, <laughs> um, it it comes down to how how do you feel about yourself when you're by yourself? Like, do you feel that you're that you're doing right by yourself? You're you're living up to your own personal um, values, really, uh, uh, doing the best that you can. You know, and it's interesting you say that because I have a very dear friend who comes from a medium sized family, um, but they all live a distance from her. Um, and when we were talking about the holidays, I said to her, you know, do you go to visit your family? And she goes, not at holiday time. Hmm. And I said, okay, because everybody, I shouldn't say everybody, but there's this image that that's what people do. You're supposed to do. Yeah. <laughs> and, and what does that I do always, to the airports? And what does that do to right. like, oh my goodness. <laughs> and I always felt badly that my husband and I always, uh, had to work around holiday time. So we had to do holiday with family at a different time. And sometimes I think, oh, this isn't fair. And I, I'd cry because, you know, everybody else is having such a great time with their family. I've since learned that's not always the case. But in her case, she really loves her alone time. Yeah. And she was explaining to me some of the things that she do has done in the past for holiday. Um, she's gone on a personal retreat. So she said it's, she finds a cabin and makes sure that there's life somewhere around, but she doesn't have to interact with it. And she can sit in the cabin. She can listen to her music, read books, sleep, whatever she wants to do. And she said, and every time it's different. 
Sometimes she goes hiking. Sometimes it's, no, I'm just going to sit here and read. Other times, um, she said one time she had a cabin that had this fully stocked kitchen. And she's not a baker. But she baked for three days. Mm -hmm. um, and that just gave me a whole different look on life. That we can sit around and feel sorry for ourselves because we're alone. Hmm. Or we can learn how to like being alone. Uh, I think it's so important to what you know, whoever you are, whatever age you are, whatever your relationship status is, I think it is so important to be to to if you're not already to learn how to enjoy your own company. I mean, I think that that is huge, and it you know it's it's related to what we were. What I was talking about earlier with that quote about how you feel about yourself when you're by yourself. Um, if you can enjoy your own company, it's not to say that we don't work, we're, 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 we're social animals. I mean, you know, we, we, we all to some degree require social interaction and positive, positive social interaction. Um, but I think it is really essential. And the better, the more at ease you are with yourself, uh, it's just, it's just, everything's better. And, you know, if you're, for instance, if you're single and wanting a partner, you become far more attractive to, to potential partners when you are comfortable in your own skin, when you, when you like yourself, when you are at ease with yourself, when you enjoy yourself, appreciate yourself and enjoy your own company and can, can be alone and be okay with that. In fact, even relish it like your friend that sounded like. Um, I think that that is just hugely important. And if, you know, if you don't already feel that way, that should be a priority. Learn, like figure out how to become your own best friend. Because the truth is, is that you're the only person that you're going to be with for the entirety of your life from day one right. till day last. Um so again, it's not to downplay the importance of relationships with others. And, you know, we, you know, Bruce Springsteen said, everybody has a hungry heart. Anytime you say everybody, you know, there's always going to be some wild right. exception, but no, I mean, we, that's generally, I think the case is we do, we do, you know, want and need other people and thrive in healthy and positive relationships. So but yeah, that the the relationship with yourself, it, it really, it's just, I can't overstate the importance of that. And, you know, as I mentioned to you before we went live today, you know, my family, uh, we were all sort of sick over the holidays. Um, and you, people might say, well, hey, that's, you know, that's sad, but at least the three of you were together. Well, the reality of it was we weren't, we were in separate rooms. We were, <laughs> we didn't want to keep passing it back and forth. And I learned something about myself that um, even though it was Christmas Eve and Christmas, um, I really didn't have the energy to get out of bed. I couldn't um, go down to the kitchen to, you know, make the meal that I had thought we were going to have. Um, I was okay. It was, I got to take care of me. Um, and my son and my husband were the same way. They didn't ask for anything. What they need when they needed something, they found their way to get it. Um, and I was amazed because typically in the past we've been codependent on each other. Um, and I thought this was a big revelation, and it's something that I wish I could share with others. That you don't really have to get sick to be in that situation, but to know that it's okay. I need this time for me. And this is what I'm going to do for it. Um, in the past, yeah. I would have felt selfish. Right. Well, and there's also a difference between codependence and interdependence. So, you know, codependence usually implies that there's some unhealthy boundaries involved, right? Where you're you're maybe giving uh, at the expense of yourself. You're sacrificing your own needs 
um, to, to continuously show up for someone else or, you know, like there's, there's just some fuzzy boundaries going on. Interdependence means we're all interdependent. I mean, you know, independent, we, we have such a steadfastly independence focused culture. It's really hard to shake it, you know, self-reliance, uh, you know, rugged individualism, our whole, you know, it's like our whole culture is based on this, this premise and, you know, it's good to be self-reliant. These are, it's not like it's a bad thing. It's, it's really a good thing, but I think that we're kidding ourselves if, if we think that we can be complete, we don't need any, like, that's just not, we're, it's just not life. I mean, so interdependence is like in a healthy relationship dynamic, you, you know, one supports the other when the, you know, there are going to be times where the, it's not, it's not always in balance, perfect, exact balance, but like, you know, you bring your strengths to a relationship and you, when, when your partner is in need of extra support, you provide that support and vice versa. And you're basically like stronger and better together than either of you could be on your own. Uh, that's that's interdependence. And by the way, we're all interdependent. I mean, like the whole web of life is interdependent. Sure. So anyway, that's a whole other conversation. Okay. Well, I like the interdependence rather than the codependency. Um, yeah. But, you know, again, this, it doesn't take rocket science to know that we can make a better life for ourselves, and that better life doesn't necessarily mean that we have to go out and work three, four jobs to have a bucket full of money. Okay. I mean, for some people that might work, but we can have a better life just doing little things for ourselves and not in a selfish way. And that's something that I've been learning, especially this past year. Um, if I can make myself feel good, I'm more willing yeah. to help other people. Okay? Yeah, and you're gonna you're gonna have more, you're gonna be able to show up better for other people. Think about it. I mean, like it's like if you sacrifice sleep, let's say, to so that you can do for other people, or whatever. And it's like if you're you're not gonna be in a good enough condition to do for other people if you haven't gotten like your basic physical needs you know, basic needs, we need sleep, we need nutrition, you know, we need rest in addition to, in addition to exercise. And like, so yeah, your point is so well taken and it, and it really, it doesn't have to be anything drastic. It's, um, but doing it on a regular basis and also tuning in this is, again, I come back to self-reflection, tuning into what, what do I need? Cause we're so, so often not even aware of it. We're just, we're disconnected from ourselves, from our bodies, from, you know, our own, needs our own preferences and so even just on a regular basis throughout the day taking a pause and saying what do i need right now is it a is it a 10 minute nap is it a snack is it uh uh i need a, a social interaction i need like a i need to make a, a phone call and connect with someone what do i need so that i will be buoyed and be able to show up for the rest of my life and yeah, right. It's like, it can be little things. And these are all, this is like, this is taking care of yourself. This is being your own best friend. This is, this is showing up for yourself, which is what allows you to show up for others. And believe well, me, I know, I know from personal experience and, and, you know, again, our culture, unfortunately reinforces this. It's like work yourself to the bone and, and it rewards that, you know, it rewards like self-sacrifice to the point of self harm. <laughs> um, it's not, you know, maybe you can get away with it for a period of time, but it, it will catch up with you for sure. And it's just, it's not sustainable and it's not healthy in the long term. Well, you know, it's interesting. My husband pointed something out to me and didn't even realize what I was doing, but um, I was one who every night I would throw the laundry in the washing machine, the morning in the dryer, and then I put it away. So every day I was doing laundry and I was feeling overwhelmed. And he said to me, did your mother do laundry every day when you were growing up? I said, no. He said, how often did she do laundry? 
probably once a week. And if there was something special that had to get washed, maybe. He said, but you're doing it every night. That's why you hate it so much. He said, I'm not going to tell you you're going to love it if you do it once a week. He said, but if I see a huge pile of stuff on the bed that has to be put away, I'm probably more tempted to help you. But when I just see a few things there. <laughs> Interesting. He said, it doesn't, I don't get that cue that says, hey, help Karen. And I thought, well, what's your problem? You know, that doesn't make any sense. But I thought I would try it. And he is so right. As soon as he sees that pile on the bed, if I've just walked out of the room for a second, he's putting things away. And so now it's become a combination chore, which I, you know, I still don't like to do laundry. I wish I could afford somebody to come in and do my laundry, put everything away, uh, but I can't. Um, but it took him to finally say to me, you're wearing yourself out because the chore itself was taking the time. He said, so instead of seven days a week, it's one day a week. And we sort of timed it, how long it took to put the clothes away. And it probably was in the same, basically the same amount of time for one day that I was doing mm. it seven days a week. Yeah, that's a great um that's a great calibration. That's a small tweak and or change that over time has a really like large impact, large effect. And again, like if, if that wasn't going to be the answer that worked for you, then you would keep tweaking it until you figured out like what's the exactly. sweet spot. Yeah. And and this is, you know, all we have to do is do this for everything in our lives. That's all. <laughs> and then life would be boring because we'd have it all figured out. And <laughs> what can I say? Well, again, it's been a great conversation. Um, I'm hoping that our listeners get something out of it because I have. It's allowed me to do some reflection. Um, and I'm looking forward to what I'm going to be changing into over the next couple of weeks or months because I know I have some ideas of things that I want to make changes about. Fantastic. And, uh, and don't forget to be kind and loving to yourself along the way. I will. Every step Absolutely. of the way. <laughs> Have a great day. Thanks, Eric. Take Bye care, now. Karen. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.